Hey Technofreaks, Technoon here, back with another part of the custom guide for Mortal Kombat 11 Ultimate. This time, we take a look at the characters from Mortal Kombat Trilogy. Well, Mortal Kombat 3 slash UMK3, but Trilogy was sort of the final byproduct of that game's engine, and if we were to just use MK3, we'd have like three people to cover. Anyway, we start with the Lin Kuei's former member, the Dark Destroyer, not Sean Wallace. I meant Noob Cybot. Just roll the tape. Noob has some great variations that just lack that one move that makes them really special. Seeing Double is that classic MK9 Noob with Shadow Slide, Ghost Ball, and the ability to use Teleslam in the air really driving that old school feel. Dark Sabbath is the more combo orientated variation, improving his teleport to become an extender, and you also have the Spirit Ball, a fast, gimmickless version of Ghost Ball that, unlike Yamcha, can't be used in multiple directions or set up for that level three. Oh dear, I'm going off topic. Anyway, it adds that extra zoning potential to the fray and allows a perfect restand from its as one string. However, Sickleport lets it down. While it is a decent move, it's very limited to how you can actually use it. Pitch Black, however, is a great move paired with literal meh. Sickle Snag is crazy good for anti-air and is a combo extender. Sickle Toss is an okay overhead projectile thing, similar to Kenji's overhead possession thing in MKX, and Shadow Dive is the lazy man's dive kick that Noob can't be arsed doing, so his shadow does it for him. It's okay in the fact that it, you know, connects with people, but it feels a bit tame for me. So we have some options here. If we tweak Seeing Double, replace the Ur Teleslam and the Ghost Ball with Shadow Portals and Spirit Ball, we add a strong zoning game and combo potential, which feels really good. Spirit Ball gives you that perfect reset from the As One string, and you have two of his best moves in the variation now in Shadow Portals and Shadow Slide. But then we can also crank things up to 11 and give Noob the best moves from all three of his variations. Shadow Slide, Shadow Portals, and Sickle Snag. Bingo Bango, we have the fighting game equivalent of a noob tube. This is literally a Call of Duty grenade launcher in fighting game form. You don't need any skill to shred with it, but those who know how to use it effectively will dominate. Now, Wayne, like Melina, is still kind of in that teething process. <sighs> Did it again. We're still finding out how good he can really be, but as a rain main that stays mainly off the plane, I feel I have a better grasp, so here we go. Rain falls into that Kung Lao territory of too many double slotters or pseudo slotters. Waterball and his Thunderstrike, now dubbed Purple Pain, a lot of PPs being thrown around here, are two slots, so you can't really ever have that classic rain feel. And then there's the God of Lightning variation that is sort of a three slotter all because of Quantum Slice. For this move to be at its best, you need the other two moves, Quantum Rift for the crushing blow, and a Denian Force for the extra zippiness. And it's a decent variation, but you do lose that armor-breaking flying water god or Aquaman strike that gives you a beautiful Izuna drop crushing blow. Ugh, if only he had a command grab. Reign of Terror isn't too bad either. You have the boost of both your Geyser Kick and the new Geyser Palm for combo extensions, and Riptide for that MK9 restand option. And then there's Hydroplane, that with some good string knowledge can be used as a sort of repost, and it has a crushing blow, what's not to like? But I feel the third variation, Perfect Storm, is the better of the three. It has Water Ball, which has some great combo options, and Tidal Wave, which is good at staggering the opponent and keeping you safe. Personally, though, I feel these all are just missing that little something that adds the danger. 
Now, yes, Tidal Wave is a safe tool up close, but you have to get there. And with Reigns Forward 2, that's not too hard. He has some really nice advancing normals, and the Ambered Waterfall can bring them to you if it connects. But then there's the Zona characters, the guys that want that projectile war. And yes, you have Evaporate, and I think that move is a beauty in itself. But Quantum Rift and Water Ball is such a cheeky setup. Imagine being Sub Zero, but you're able to put a wall up and then fire his Ice Ball behind said wall. That is cheeky. Or if you want, you could give him the guys a palm for even more combo potential. Hydro Boost isn't too bad either. It's a more tricky combo extender that works with giving you a free jump in at the cost of meter, which could be useful for pressure but it replaces the geyser kick, and while people are singing its praises, I don't really see it. Yeah, a jump 2 has great jailing potential, but as far as I can tell, there's enough of a gap to flawless punish. Unless I'm getting the timing so wrong, but every option of the move I've done early amp or late amp, all you have to do is look for that yellow flash of rain and release the block as he's falling. Practice enough and you'll have no worries. So I don't know, if you like it, you like it, I'ma keep my kick. Now my ultimate pick, which is the move I've been sitting on all this time, and I feel could be his best, is Purple Pain. This move is pretty slow, it can be removed if you are hit, but it's a dangerous setup tool that is stupidly advantageous on block and hit. Like, if it hits you, you can throw another one out. No issues. Then, when it's amped, it's a combo starter. You don't lose anything you would already have. It's just beautiful and a move I've been having so much fun with. Slap on a tidal wave for that safety or guys a palm again for more combo potential and you have something really strong in your hands. Jade variations are like kids in sweet shops. Fat. What my PR guy says I was meant to say is, she has so many options to choose from, it's really hard to decide. Emerald Defender is that somewhat classic Queen of the Zone Jade we all know and love, or loathe if you're playing against her. Having moves like the Urglaive, Adenian Spark, and the Combo Extender in Upglaive, alongside the Seizure Procedure, Dodging Shadows, to one, remove the opponent's zone game, and two, make purchasing those freaking eye patches for glasses a well thought out business choice because I probably would have died. Seriously though, Neverrealm. If there's anything to take from the whole Cyberpunk 2077 fiasco is that just slapping on a disclaimer so you can make a character flash like she's at a freaking rave or have a guy have literal flash photography in his character selection. Kind of insulting. The purple aura that she gets when she amplifies a move in Dodging Shadows would have been enough. Hell, if you wanted to be artistic with it, Using Zatanna's invisible outlines from Injustice would have worked even better. But no, you have to strobe us. Okay, rant over. Jaded gives us a nice mix-up option with Pole Vault that can be cancelled with an extra ability, Pole Vault Cancel. So yeah, we have a pseudo two-slot variation here. Then she is given her classic Amped Nitro Kick, where she keeps them in the same spot. It's kind of a waste to me, but yeah, it's nice to keep that momentum to one side or the other. But this is Jade, she isn't much of a combo powerhouse, even in the corner. So I feel if it was just another option, i.e. she would have the choice of the normal way or this classic way, depending on your input, then that is a different story. So now Jade is let down here. Her final variation, Untamable, once again has a sweet move in Deadly Assassin, which alters some of her attacks and adds more strings. Look at this sweep! Look at it! Alongside the other crazy strings, it's already strong. Then there's Divine Forces. This replaces Seizure Procedure with Katana's old reflectability. <laughs> Guess Katana ain't the only Adenian stealing moves in this game. This Reflect has the same boon as Mime Time in that you can amplify it to keep the move going. So say you predict wrong and they time a projectile punish, well, boom, there you go. Amped burned and Reflect still goes through. 
but to be honest, I feel this isn't all that great. You already have a stronger ability in the seizure procedure. Then we have Vanishing Winds, a low ground pound like move that is okay for a little mix up. Not the best, but when amplified, you will teleport and get a low sweep. Again, I'm on the fence here as it's a bar a meter to get 10%. I'm sure it's safe, but. I don't know, I'm just not feeling it. But what is universally agreed is that 50p for a Cadbury's Freddo is daylight robbery, and two of Jade's must have moves are Erglave and Pole Vault. Two separate variation abilities that were never meant to meet. It's almost Shakespearean, if you will. But now these torn lovers can finally be together as our main catalysts. Then you add whatever you want, Adenian Spa for more zoning, Deadly Assassin for more combo strings, or even the Pole Vault cancel for those mind games. The possibilities are endless. Shiva is a more build what you want kind of thing. The variations are fine, but they feel more of a jack of all trades kind of deal. Missing one vital piece to the puzzle. No, not the fact that she's almost seven feet tall and has about as good a reach as a T-Rex in a boxing match, but you got a good point there. Smashing grabs sort of feels like classic Shiva. Simple space control with punishes for letting her leap too much. Deadly Dragon is a combo build with a more fierce projectile and Mean Queen is a pseudo grappler with one rushdown tool. Like I said, there isn't really anything full on here. Her zone options are sorta of limited and that's the same with her grapple options. And with this we have some simple remedies, mixing a few skills around and adding some unused beauties. So first her zoning option, let's give her Dragon Stance. This sort of upgrades the fireball into a stance where she now holds four fireballs. Each can be aimed high, normal or low. And you fire these with each attack button, which with the right timing can actually combo each hit. When you amplify the stance normally, she combines all the fireballs into a much slower but large mid-hitting orb that deals decent damage on hit, but very unsafe on block point blank. Anywhere else is super safe. Amplifying low will create an eruption almost similar to Shang's upskulls that takes the opponent far away from you to keep that space. And finally, amplifying up will send all fireballs out at once. But this isn't all that good because at a distance, the bottom orbs are gonna hit the floor. So you will always lose out on damage for that. Sounds a little lame at the moment, right? But bear with me. So what we do is we pair it up with enhanced leap because dealing with a super slow orb and a teleporting leap is one thing. But when you're dealing with that super slow orb and dealing with the possibility that someone's gonna crash down on you that you can't just back away from, that's a different story. And for fun, let's add Dragon Charge for some more combo potential. And yeah, this is kind of a jack of all trades again, but it's a much more zoning focused and she isn't afraid to get close and personal. Basically, this is a more optimized version of the classic Shiva. Now, for those who want to be a master of something, well, this one's quite simple. Replace Mean Queen's Death March with Shokin Snag, and you have a pure grappler build that combos no less. Both Shokin Snag and Battle Scars pop the opponent up when amplified, so now you have more ways to punish the opponent. If you condition them to block low with Queen's Punishment, they are prime for Battle Scars or your back three. If they choose to jump out, you can punish them with Shokin Snag, which if you use the normal version, they now can't go for a jump again, else they will eat a crushing blow. So now you have grounded them for your overhead low mix-up game. The big issue here is Battle Scars replaces Untamed Fury, and if losing that armor-breaking crushing blow is not your cup of tea, replace Battle Scars with Dragon Stance. That way you have a powerful zone game and setup alongside a strong punishing 50-50 game and something that instantly goes nope to breakaways and fatal blows. Trust me, this is one dangerous Shokan. Next is Nightwolf and he's kind of a letdown. He is sort of held back by double slots and pseudo slots, making his progress a bit stagnated. Then there's the fact that most of his unused moves are just straight up Kiba Dookie. The Matoka Warrior has great combo potential with the two-slotted Rising Tomahawk, but then gives him a very slow buff move that, for the damage you deal with it, isn't worth anything. 
Same goes for all those unused spirit moves. Ancestral Gift has the more grappler feel with Tomahawk Swing and the Grappling Stalker alongside the teleporting Moonlight Reflector because f*** your zone game. Big issue is you have no real extensions to get that damage. Finally, Shaman has that slower but more hit advantageous Lightning Arrow and the pseudo slotting Spirit Tracks and Ancestral Hunter for the more reliable advancing combo-y goodness. But as for our variation options, I ask you this, what's better than trying to invoke powerful animal spirits for buffs? Launching said animal spirit as a weapon, and while I wished it was Kiba because, well, you could have easily made his animality into a brutality here, Hannah's Wrath has some potential, at least on paper. You have a move here that is okay for projectile speed-wise, doesn't really do much damage, and if you land the attack, you can't use the projectile again for a short period of time, but no, 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 wait, 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 come back, come back, come back. The biggest spoon here is that this bloody chicken blocks your enemy's ability to amplify their moves. Even better, while it states that it only does this on hit, that just means if the move connects. If they block, bye bye amplify. And what helps it more is that it's also a mid hitting projectile, so they can't just duck it. Now this means they have no choice but to at least jump over it. Now you could pair this up with other projectiles for a more zone based game, but I've added it to the grapple variation. Sure, teleporting reflector is fine as it helps you get in, but if they can't amplify their moves, it'll be easier to get in on some zoners, and then you have your time to shine as, come on, what can happen? They can't really do too much to you with no amplified abilities. Seriously, this is my go-to build, and it's crazy. But I will say if you want more combo for your heavy, adding the command grab to Rising Tamahawk or Spirit Track pseudo slots will be much more up your alley. Because let's face it, you can't beat a good combo that finishes with the strongest combo ender you have. That armor breaking crushing blow really makes it worth the while. The penultimate character we have is Sindel, and she already has some good setups, splitting hers with that haircut for good combo potential and whip and flip for a more space control get in tool. Then you have Loud and Clear with that Banshee Dash and Deadly Echo for some err based shenanigans and Malefic March for a nice advancing ender. I mean, even Royal Adenian has some great options together, and oh goodness, I've gone cross-eyed. Now, the biggest downside is that her cut is a two-slotter, so some of our big options are already limited. But the main thing I want to try is sort of tweaking an already optional build. So we already have the option of Low Screamer, Whip and Flip, and Bellowing Banshee, but I'm not a big fan of the latter. So my choice is to replace that with either Banshee Barrage, or Banshee Dash. Banshee Barrage is a decent combo starter, but it's pretty unsafe on block, while the Banshee Dash is literally Sindel crazy time. This move is a projectile that, while having not a lot of range, if it hits and you amplify it, Sindel teleports in and you get a free jump in attack. Pairing it up with a low projectile and a move that punishes ducking and you've got some decent options here. But if you're really a true sadist, Deadly Echo, Banshee Dash and Whip and Flip for that scummy, disgusting, aerial bullcrap that will make your eyes bleed and your foes scream out in pain as they ask what the frick is going on. Last but by no means least, we have Cabal, and I'm jumping for joy because, well, he was another character I played religiously in the beta, and to be honest, I had a cruel setup for him there already. But Let's go on to the normal stuff first. Mean Streak has a good zoning tool with the rolling buzzsaw, and the ability to cancel his Nomad Dash adds that bit of mind games to it. But the whole thing is let down by the straight aerial buzzsaw, because let's face it, his diagonal one is pure gold. Clean Cut has the beautiful low hook grab, which is in my opinion his best move all around, because, well, he freaking needs it. Outside of pokes, sweeps, and certain abilities, Cabal has no low options, meaning there is no real reason to ever block low during his strings. Low hook grab removes this and now gives real mix-ups 
to his most used strings. Extended hook is another great move offering you a restand that puts the opponent in throwing distance, keeping things more or less your turn with some options that you can throw out. You can go for the throw, getting that extra 130 damage, jab them out and jail them into another string, or if they are savvy to the throw, bait for the uppercut and go for the big hit skis. All around, this is a great variation that's completely let down by the fact that Nomad Spin is about as useful as a wet fart. It has no combo potential whatsoever, so you're looking at using this as an ender. And while its damage is on par with Hook Slam, Hook Slam is the main damage ender because, well, yeah. And yes, I'll agree, Nomad Spin is the most safe special he has. But that's like saying Cabal is running faster because he ate a light breakfast. The dude is already absolutely safe as In fact, cancelling his main strings into this move would actually make him less safe on block than it would if you just let him finish the damn string. And while yes, the game does say that if you spend some meter, you can make Nomad Spin safer on block, but that is a dirty little lie. You can't amplify this move on block. So it's just bin worthy. And it's kind of the same for the spins. Hook grab is a brilliant anti air and combo extender that really gives Cabal that extra bit of damage he was kind of missing. And Gas Blast is another restand move and my personal favourite of the two restand moves. Yes, it's harder to connect, so you have to adjust your combo so that it does. And when it does connect, you have a more advantageous restand that gives you more safety and puts them in the perfect spot for a cheeky back one string that keeps the pressure on. Amplifying it sends them further away and gives you the best brutality Cabal has. Yes, this is also important. When you amplify it on block, it basically resets the neutral, keeping you really safe, but pushes the opponent back where they can't do anything at all. If the Amplified Blast whiffs, it lingers, creating a cloud that both heals Cabal and hurts the opponent if either are in said cloud. Pretty dangerous stuff if you get a throw off inside it. Once again, this variation is let down by another spinny trick, this time a low spinner. Now, this isn't as bad as the Nomad Spin. Heck, it's a decent combo starter, and it finishes with a low if done normally. But it's those extra steps getting to that low that lets it down. It's too telegraphed. And low hook would be a lot better. So with both clean cut and the spins, we have Christmas and birthdays rolled into one with just one tiny little tweak for each. But firstly, I would like to improve Mean Streak and give us a sort of holy trinity. Because, well, the zone and mind games are fantastic, it just needs that diagonal buzzsaw and a bit more oomph. So remove straight saw and give Cabal hook grab. Now you have something cooking. You already have a low attack for the opponent to watch out for. And while I do think low hook grab is the better low option, the low saw gives you that zone tool. And then we add the normal hook grab to convert more damage with extensions. But this is not what we came to see, is it? We came to see the beta meta reborn. And that is Clean Cut 2.0. With a simple trick of cutting away the dead weight of Nomad Spin and replacing it with, you guessed it, the normal hook grab again. And why not? This setup owned in the beta. You combine the mix-up of the low hook grabs and the extensions of the normal hook grabs, combine that with the restand ability, and you have something so dangerous it was cast down into the fires of hell in hope to never re-emerge again. But it lived. And in turn, if you replace extended hooks for gas blast, you have all that and a bag of C2 setup that will frustrate opponents alike. But if you want to have some fun in that WTF is this crazy bastard doing kind of way, and not because I'm afraid of getting questioned for not including it, we have the why is my tank empty build, adding the aerial move slight gas, which is similar to the moves like fan flutter and deadly echo. It adds a lot of ur game to his abilities, and hell, if you catch him with a jumping kick, you can follow up with a slight gas into another jump kick into a nomad dash timing is strict as hell but hey it's pretty cool and a really decent tool. Pair that with the low hook grab because you need the mix-ups 
and you'll be good to go fart all around the screen. But I ain't really a big fan of it. I know, it almost wrecks Sonic Fox in that one set of random matches. But is that crazy Earth stuff really worth it? It's crazy stuff, but Sonic had the guy dead to rights set later. And if I'm painfully honest, two slots is a lot for a fart. I feel the mix-up game, the extension, and the restand options are way more important than flying across the screen like an annoying little gnat. And that's why we go for the hook, line, and sinker. Okay, that's it for the MK Trilogy lot. Hope it helped and gave you some ideas. If it did, don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, hit the bell thingy, and follow me on the Twitters. Also, feel free to check out some of my other video series. Who knows, you might find something you like. And finally, tune in next time where we won't be dealing with the MK4 or 3D era characters because, well, there's only two of them. I feel it's better to add them to the MK11 crew and add Scarlet to the MKX crew so everyone is kind of wrapped up in a nice neat package. So tune in next time where we divide the fan base with the guest characters. But until that day, this has been Techno Odin. Stay safe, claim skulls, and may the Elder Gods protect you all.